All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to our final segment of the what to and what not to do's uh, trilogy here. Um, this time we are going over uh, dinner dress and ball gowns, um, which at which point I go from lower middle class to I have way more money than cents because this is a velvet dress. Um, it looks black on here, but it is green. It is very pretty forest green. Um, the Zuov jacket that I've got on to make it a dinner dress rather than just a ball gown is the same green. Um, needs kind of tweaked just a little bit. It's a little too long and not quite fitted enough for me. Um, so eventually that'll be fixed. But this is basically what dinner dress appropriate would be. Notice I no longer have the hat on. I don't... I would have gloves. I would have my vest, uh, not vest, my shawl on, um, especially when I'm going to somebody's house. But at this point, we are assuming that I am already at said person's house, and this is just what I'm wearing. I am currently at a friend's house, or I would, in theory, be at a friend's house. And this is what I would be eating dinner in. Following this, uh, there would probably be a small intermission between dinner and a dance. Um, that's typical for balls, at least. Um, and then the Zuov jacket itself would be able to come off. <laughs> to show the ball gown itself. Um, ball gowns typically were the just right at the shoulder, not quite off of it yet. You can see the white here that helps like, if I have to bend down for anything that covers me. And then there's this frilly piece. Not quite sure the point of it necessarily, but it's very pretty. Um, ball gowns are basically the only thing other than children's clothing that is short sleeve. Um, Typically, especially with what I am currently wearing, you would have a hoop under it. I did not put one on yet again. Um, but this is a typical ball gown. Um, everything is cotton. There is no polyester. There is a lining to the ball gown itself. Um, the biggest thing to think about with ball gowns is don't go with square necklines. Always go with the rounded, very gentle sloping. It looks more feminine rather than the um, post-war effect of we have almost 80s looking sleeves with the square necklines. Um, bishops, like, in some cases, depends on the ball you're going to as to what you really want to wear. This is something for an actual ball, whereas what I was wearing earlier would work for barn dance or a ball. I could wear this to a general barn dance. It wouldn't be out of place necessarily, depending on who you're around. But that's basically it. This one is much shorter than the one prior. Um, I will say that proper ball gowns take, will take more than one person to put you into because mom had to lace me. Put the back here. Um, but yeah, I believe that's it. You all will likely see this one again because I am still trying to figure out how to do the ball gowns and dance dresses throughout 1860s through probably like the 50s, 1950s. That'll probably be my stopping point um, because from then on you don't really have balls anymore or evening dances necessarily. I mean you do but you have to know a lot of people in order to get into them. Um, and at that point, you also start getting into 
not grand dressing, more of the exact opposite of grand dressing. Um, but that being said, I will see you all next time. I will hopefully figure out what we're going to do. Will not be the ball gown thing yet, but we're working towards it. And yeah, I will see y'all next time. Everybody have a good day. All right, friends, real quick, uh, kind of disclaimer to what I said earlier. Um, square necklines were, yes, pop more popular after the war, but they were worn during the American Civil War as well as tea dresses. I didn't know this until like a week ago, and based on the fact that this video itself is being put up way later than I intended, um, I kind of got to go back and sit down and listen to what I said, and it wasn't quite entirely true, so I'm fixing it now before it gets uploaded, uh, hopefully today and or tomorrow. Um, we are doing two videos this week. Uh, one is going to be this one, where we are finishing up the third segment of the Do's and Don'ts series. On Wednesday, we will be cooking. We are doing 19th century food waste, and depending on the weather, we will either be inside or outside. At which point, if we are inside, it is going to be historic cooking in a very modern kitchen. So that'll be fun. Um, Probably going to be doing a Christmassy kind of food. Haven't quite decided which one yet. Um, and then we will go from there. Um, but yeah, just that quick disclaimer of I kind of know what I'm talking about, but I'm always still learning, just like everybody else. No one's information is absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to fix that real quick before somebody goes and decides to quote me on something. Um, so yeah, I will see you all again on Wednesday, and everybody have a good day!